Hey guys, Chase here from Mind Topology. Today I'm going to go over a very brief workflow on how to variably shell your parts using stress data. So the workflow is very brief, but I'll run, run over it very quickly here. So typically we import a part. Um, this can be a parasolid, uh, STL, um, etc. We then turn it to our native format before turning it into a uh, quad mesh, or a, sorry, my, my apologies, a volume mesh. Once we've turned it into a volume mesh, we can go ahead and run a static analysis on it, and you'll see the results on the screen here. Um, we, all, we have all this excess material that we don't need, uh, kind of redundant. So our goal now is to uh, create a shell of this part, and we want it to be smart such that it's thinner over here in low stress areas and thicker in higher stress areas over here. So the way we do that is we uh, turn our stress results into a field, and we use a ramp. Um, to then uh, variably shell this part in this variable shell block I've constructed here. And what that looks like is this, but when we go ahead and section cut it, you'll notice that the shell thickness ranges between 0.5 millimeters and 4 millimeters, and that's dependent on the stress data at that location. So areas of uh, higher, uh, higher stress get a thicker wall, and uh, the inverse for lower stress. Once we've uh, created the variable shell part, we can go ahead and apply some perforation holes. This is for powder removal, um, et cetera. And you'll notice that I just subtracted some cylinders at these locations here. And then finally, after the shelling and the perforations, we can go ahead and run another, uh, turn that into another volume mesh, um, this time with a bit finer of an element size, and run the same static analysis and the goal here is to see, um, essentially you can do this in an iterative approach until you get a more uniform stress map and uh, a more uniform um, stress distribution so that you minimize material while maintaining uh, the structural integrity as or so as much as you need. Um, and then the last step here is to turn that into a quad mesh before a CAD part and we can export this as a step file or a parasolid file to your uh, CAD software where you can then um, carry on with your typical manufacturing workflow. Thanks for watching.